Okay, we're new setters on this video. This is totally my jam. It is fasting and over 50. Why and how do we fast over 50? And this is for both men and women. Don't, don't click off if you're a man. Why would we fast over 50? And how do we do it to slow down aging? I can't wait to dive in on this. So here we go. Let's give the context. Let's look at the big picture here. And I wrote extensively about this in Fast Like a Girl. In fact, chapter, chapter two um, was all about the science behind fasting. And the reason that this was really important is that actually, a lot of people will ask me like, well, what was your favorite chapter of the book? And I gotta tell you that that was one of my favorite because what I did is that I, I took six different length fasts. I put the science in there. I explained why you would want to do these fasts. And I, I bu even bullet pointed them out so that it made it so easy. And a lot of times I get asked like, is fast like a girl only for women? And the answer is no, primarily because of this chapter. If you want a good condensed summary on what fasting does for your body, please go check out that chapter. But on this video, I really wanna dive into this longevity piece and how do we use fasting for longevity? And when we look at, the, at that, ask, answer that question, we have to remember that fasting does three things in, in, in the process of anti-aging. First, it removes senescent cells. So senescent cells are like these zombie cells. Uh, Mark Hyman wrote a book called Forever Young. I chatted with him on his podcast about this. And um, the zombie cells are these cells that are highly dysfunctional. They're inflamed. They've got weak mitochondria. They might have some genetics that have been triggered, like some cancer genes. Um, they might have some negative thought patterns, like I've taught you that Bruce Lipton showed us that our thoughts and our energy are in these cells. And so you have to keep in mind that a senescent zombie cell, aging cell, keeps re replicating more senescent cells. So once a cell is aged, if you don't fix that cell, it keeps replicating itself over and over and over again, which is why we wanna get rid of them. So if we can get rid of these senescent cells and let the more youthful cells emerge, then those youthful cells will start replicating more youthful cells. So that's a key concept. The second thing is that what we know is that these zombie senescent cells are full of inflammation. And when we have inflammation throughout our body, we're wearing away joints, we, we wear away dendrites and neurons, the dendrites are on the end of the neurons in our brain, and so we want to make sure that we're keeping inflammation down. And then the third is minimizing stored sugar. The, more, the higher your fasting glucose, the higher your insulin, you know, the higher your hemoglobin A1C, it just means you're, you, this process of glycation is going on in your body. And glycation means that sugar is just swimming and it's gumming up red blood cells and it's being stored as fat. And what we can know about fasting is we can wipe all of that away. And, and, and I, I'll even go to my menopausal women, since we're dealing, we're talking about over 50, is that we can know that we can balance the estrogen system and we can preserve estradiol, who is diminishing greatly after, as we go through menopause, but especially after 50. So there's so many reasons we want to fast to slow down aging. With that in mind, I think the most logical question would be, well, which fast, which length fast should I do? And, uh, you know, I would say there are two in particular that I love, and then a third one I'm going to throw in here for a moment. So the first is the 24-hour fast. And the 24-hour fast is really fun for me. I, I do it a lot in my day because the research on it was that it re-energizes stem cells in your intestinal tract, and it makes it so any damage from food, antibiotics, women who've been on birth control for many years will be repaired. And it can, it, you can get this surge of stem cells just in one 24 hour fast. But if you're dedicated to anti-aging, you wanna feel better, look younger, then, and you wanna get, absorb your nutrients more, then let's do one 24 hour fast a week. I think it's a good routine, especially for those of you that are skilled fasters here, I know you can do one a week. Okay, the second length fast, I know you know what this is, especially those of you who have like been listening to me a while. Which, what's, the, what's the, my favorite fast for slowing down aging? It's the 72-hour fast. This is what Walter Longo taught us. 
And if we, if we look at Volter's study, it was basically showing that after 72 hours without food or nutrients coming in, so this means you can't be doing your supplements, it, it's, it's a sensor within the cell, what ended up happening is that the white blood cells in, in he, his original uh, cohort that he studied was, pe was uh, people going through um, chemotherapy and he found that the white blood cells were decimated when you go through chemotherapy. But if he put uh, people into the, a fasted state when they went through chemotherapy, those white blood cells will, were well preserved. Okay, well, why? At 72 hours, you get a surge of stem cells. And stem cells can repair any cell in the body. Volter just looked at it from an immune system standpoint. But I've shared with you all here that I've used three-day water fast to heal musculoskeletal injuries. And a lot of you have left me comments on how you've used it the same. So there's, you know, you can use it to repair any part of your body that has a chronic uh, feeling of depletion in it, whether it's your brain, whether it's an injured body part, where it's, whether it's your skin, we can start to lean into these 72 hour fasts to start to repair these parts of our body because once you get stem cells, here's what's the most brilliant part about stem cells. They know where to go. They know what cells are aging the most. They're gonna go there. They're gonna go to the part of your body that ages the most. I'll, I'll tell you a story. Um, uh, my husband and I just got stem cell injections. Just my husband, we did it for his knee and hip. Um, for me, I just kind of wanted to see, like I, I, I've heard the buzz. I have a good friend who owns a regenerative medicine center in Florida. And I was like, yeah, let's, you know, I'm 53. Let's try, let's try some IV stem cells. And within a week, I could feel the parts that it was, it was healing. I have some injury in my low back mm -hmm. and it started to go in there and you could feel it healing. It's the same thing you all feel when you go on a three day water fast and, and it's completely free. So go into the longer fast if you're trying to slow down aging and if you have some of these chronic conditions, I will tell you with pain, and I really wanna point this out, is that if you have a chronic pain situation, it wears on your brain and the brain has to adapt over time. So throwing some of these longer fasts is really important because it re-energizes the, it re-energizes the brain by taking the pain away. Okay, I gotta interrupt this video because I have a free guide for you so you can master fasting. It's called A Beginner's Guide to a Fasting Lifestyle. And all you've gotta do is click here and you can jump right in. Second is what you break your fast with is really important. So make sure you're breaking it with protein because as you age, your muscle, it's an organ of longevity. So make sure that you are eating plenty of protein when you go in out of the fasted state into food. I would encourage you to make sure you're getting at least 30 grams of protein to trigger an amino acid receptor site in the body so that you can make sure you grow those muscles strong. The only time I, I ever recommend you do not break a fast with protein immediately is post three day water fast. And the reason for that is we got to ease your digestive system. So there's a four-step process. I wrote about it in Fast Like a Girl. But let's, if we want to slow down aging on a regular basis, if you're doing 13 hours, 14 hours, 15 hours, whatever, your jam is the 24-hour fast I talked about, let's break it with protein so that we can build muscle, so we can help slow down the aging process. Last thing I want to say, a huge anti-aging marker is hemoglobin A1c. And I want you to focus of all the blood work. I know the CGMs are great. I know we love ketones, but most of us are getting yearly blood work every single year by our doctor or we're running it on ourselves. Your hemoglobin A1C should be under five for anti-aging, 4.5, 4.6 is ideal. What hemoglobin A1C is a measurement of is 90 days of your glucose insulin system and more importantly, it's a measurement of how much oxygen the red blood cells can carry to different tissues in your body. So if you are like a six or even a 5.5, what that means is you're not getting oxygen to tissues and tissues that don't get oxygen will age faster. So the simple as that. So there you go. I obviously had a lot to say on this. this is, I feel like this is what I live 
and, and, and working really hard, like many of you, to slow down aging. And fasting has to be a part of your anti-aging protocol. I promise you, you will thank yourself. So as always, I hope that helps. If any of you have had incredible results with fasting um, and you've noticed some of the changes that when you're, when you're fasting, um, please put it in the comments because, again, there's so many of us that are seeing some pretty cool fountain of youth um, uh, feelings and brain power. And I think it's really important that we highlight that and we share it as a community because um, fasting is really profound and it's free. So as always, I hope that helps. Okay, if you love this video, you're gonna wanna check out the next video of my food series. I, on this video, want to talk about the healthy foods that you might be eating that will stop you from a long and healthy life.